Hello folks, tonight I am going after the Propeller Nebula, and the sky is really clear right now, but I was in a real hurry to roll out my stuff and do my pole master because the weather has been terrible, uh, it's supposed to be partly cloudy tonight, and I, I just want to capture as much as I can tonight. Uh, and um, for this object, I've actually already completed an HSS version, HA in red and sulfur in green and blue. It kind of looked pretty cool. I put it on Astrobin, but I didn't want to make the video until I had a full Hubble version of this object. And so uh, I'm capturing uh, oxygen, and no matter what I capture tonight, I think I'm just going to go with it, even if it's only four hours worth, because uh, uh, the, the mean readout looks really good at 699. Um, I, I've gotten familiar with oxygen, and I know at 699, that, that pretty much tells me there's probably no moon out there tonight, and there's no haze out there, but this is about as low as I can get it. For a four-minute exposure, that is, at game 75. Um, yeah. So let's take a look at uh, one raw image. I know there's not much data and oxygen. That's why I'm just going to go with uh, four hours if I can get it. I'm not going to beat myself over the head trying to scrounge as much little data as I can when there's nothing to be found. So we'll see. I know others will take the uh, opposite approach and go 20 hours until they finally start to see strong data. But I don't want to spend that much time on the propeller. So we'll see. Let's take a look at my guiding. Uh, guiding is 0.66. That's not too bad considering I rushed through Pole Master and didn't do it as, as accurate as I probably could have, but I'll take 0.66. Uh, and we'll, we'll see how this goes. You know, it's just one of those objects that when I when I'm, I started capturing it, it's already past the meridian. I don't have a good view in the west, so I, I just don't have a lot of time. If I sound rushed, I'm kind of nervous because of the clouds. I don't have much time, and and we'll see how it goes. And my friends are texting me. Me and uh, me, Doug and Jason. Um, we all live in southeastern Michigan, and usually we're all three of us are out in our own backyards imaging away. And we have this sort of group chat going on between the three of us. So that's kind of cool that I, I can talk to these guys, and we're all going through the same thing. So anyway, that's all I got to share for now, and I'll talk to you later. Wow, we have had a lot of rain, let me tell you. It, it's, we've had at least two weeks of rain, and I think we're in store for another week of rain. I finally was able to capture a couple more hours of oxygen for the propeller nebula, so I finally processed it in the Hubble palette. And let me show you what I have got. This is HA, and by the way, I've got a lot of stuff to show you guys, so bear with me here. There's a lot to get through. Um, this HA, I, I didn't look at all the numbers. I have to go back and verify everything, but I think I've got over five hours of HA, about six hours of sulfur, and HA and sulfur are both very strong. This is after running a DBE on HA, and I ran an um, an automatic background extraction on the sulfur, and um, I ran a, a dynamic background extraction on the oxygen. This is a little over five hours on oxygen, and there's very little data here, and you know that always makes it tough. But let me show you how this data looks after I combined it all. So like I say, when I don't have a lot of data but across all three filters, I just do a, um, a straight combine, 100% sulfur in red, 100% HA in green, and 100% um, oxygen in blue. And this is what I came up with on the combine. And if you've seen my other videos, um, you probably would have expected it to look like that. And and I don't mind it because, like I've said before, I, I can I, I can pick off that yellow and make it more gold, and I can pick off this green in Photoshop and make that try and move that over to more sign or blue. And the thing is, it it took me so long. 
to finish um, capturing oxygen that I did do um, this HSS version. Um, this was uh, HA in red and sulfur in green and blue. And that's what it looked like while I was waiting to capture enough oxygen. So what, what did you think of that one? And after tonight, when I finally did capture the oxygen, here is the propeller in the Hubble palette. So what, what do you think? Hmm. Lots more data showing up in this one on the left. As to which one uh, uh, people might prefer? I don't know. I think they're both keepers. It's it's not an easy object. This is a faint object. Um, uh, at least it is in, in oxygen. So that that's what I've got. You know, I like I said, I use selective color in Photoshop to bring the colors over and 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 but I wanted to show you some other stuff. Um, hang on here. Now the Orion Nebula is um, an unfinished project so far. Um, I, I captured, uh, I think, a, a, a little over three hours of HA on it. And I have not gotten a chance to come back to it to finish capturing the LRGB. So that's what the HA looked like. But what I did while I'm waiting is I have old LRGB data from last year. Um, it's not very good. I didn't like the way the core was looking, but I, I thought, why don't I just try that? Now, it was from my wide field scope, and the HA data here is my larger refractor, and I didn't know how to combine data from different size telescopes, and that's where my friend Doug helped me out. And it's really all in the, 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 the star align process. You take all your calibrated frames that you've stacked, you run them through the align and pick your reference frame, and the align is like magic. It brings everything to the same size. I didn't know it was that easy. It's like, wow. And so this is what I've got. Let me show you. But I still want to capture LRGB data this year with the bigger scope. But in the meantime, this is what I got combining my HA with last year's RGB data from a smaller telescope. Well, that actually turned out better than I thought. Now, the, the problem is, you may notice, Running Man definitely looks a lot different. Um, this is the HA version of, of Running Man. Now, the, the Running Man most people are familiar with, that definition comes from luminance. And I had to throw away the luminance. It was just completely blown out, so I lost a lot of the definition for Running Man. So this is just an HA plus RGB image without luminance. So I still want to recapture all that LRGB data. But in the meantime, I thought that did look pretty cool. And and all I did to really combine HA with RGB, I just treated HA like it was luminance. I don't know if you're supposed to do it like that. But I just did, a, you know, I combined all the RGB data, made it nonlinear. And then I just, with the LRGB combined, I just threw in... Uh, my HA into that luminance channel and dragged it over to the RGB and poof, that's, you know, I this is what I got. Now I played with the colors a bit, of course, to make them more saturated, more vibrant, and I, I probably overdid the colors. It, it's probably not a real true color like you, people might see in other photos, but, you know, this, this, I, I geared it towards my taste. I don't care. But I still think it was pretty cool. And let me show you something else here. I actually had another version of HA where um, I found old data I captured, I think, back in February um, with without the reducer. So Running Man wasn't in the picture, but now I've got a closer view of Orion, which I then also combined with that old um, RGB data from my wide field scope. So now I'm a little bit closer in, and this is yet an another version. So... And again, I, I know I overdid the color. It's probably not what other people might be expecting, but I think it's super cool, and I think it really pops, and people loved it on Facebook. <laughs> so um, I'm happy with it.
and I sent it out. Maybe, maybe somebody else will like it, you know? So that's the Orion Nebula um, closer in. And let me show you um, what else. I, I made a video already about the Little Rosette Nebula and the way it, I, I this was an HOO version where I had um, um, HA in red and oxygen in green and blue. But I had time to go back and capture um, sulfur. And this is how it looks with that. I don't know if you guys have seen that unless you would have been following me on Astrobin. But that's how it looks. And so the one on the right is the one I made a video for, but this is the one you probably haven't seen before on the left, the full Hubble version, my my Hubble version anyway. So what do you think? I think the one on the right maybe had maybe a bit more of a, a natural look to it, whereas, of course, the Hubble version is totally um, false color, but I still like it. And uh, let me show you one more thing. <laughs> Despite the, the clouds and the rain, I've kept myself busy. And uh, I think you last saw the horse head when it had 2.7 hours or so. But now I jacked that up to 5.7 hours of HA. So that's how it looks right now. And this was kind of a surprise that this HA version became a top pick in Astrobin. This is the one I was least expect to have a top pick because it's it's not even in color. But um, hey, they picked it. I'll take it. Thank you very much. Um, the horse head to me is one of those those objects that just looks really cool, you know, in in mono without any color. I but I still want to go back and add color to this one too. So I had a lot of things on my plate that I want to do. But anyway, I'm. Uh, that's all I've got to share with you now, folks, and I'm, I've, I've got clouds for the next week. So, anyway, thanks for tuning in, and I will see you later.